I myself have seen a loop going on in my life. I started self-improvement in 2022. Just about this time of the year, I was depressed, sad, and lonely. I started self-improvement and everything changed for me. I loved my life when I started it and I love it right now. And I see a way in which self-improvement actually becomes detrimental and I don't want you to follow down this path that I was led down by, so, by, by social media self-improvement, by what I call blueprint self-improvement. Now, blueprint self-improvement, at least the name, comes from a guy called Brian Johnson, who is the mo most measured human in history. You can Google him. He has a very good biohacking um, YouTube channel following the advice of scientists who talked about habits that you can do for quote unquote self-improvement didn't work for me. It made me sad. It made me way too controlled about the things I did. Um, and it made me just forget how to have fun in life. Self-improvement advice right now is about women and business. No one talks about meditation anymore. And I'm just asking myself, where did all this go? In the past two years, the self-improvement culture has fallen. I'm telling you, self-improvement is a thousands of years old tradition that we men have started following in the past two to three to four years. Some men are on it longer, some shorter. And I think everyone who is on self-improvement will be better or has been better or is better. How I partially understand how people say self-improvement ruined my life is people just talk about blueprint self-improvement. They talk about hustle culture, self-improvement. The self-improvement they did isn't the self-improvement that you should do. They did what I call blueprint self-improvement. Blueprint self-improvement is doing optimized habits. Real self-improvement is doing as much as you can and living your life in a better way. It's not maxing out the habits, but it's maxing out your whole life. If you do self-improvement, it should change you. And I'm not gonna do any more talking here. I'm gonna give you practical steps right now to change blueprint self-improvement to real self-improvement again and find your way back out of this loop of I feel good, I, I become complacent, or I become too obsessive with self-improvement to the point where it, detriment, where it detriments my mindset. So the way most people see self-improvement in a circle is like this. I, however, see it different and I see it more like a lying eight. And I'm going to tell you why. So you start off right here. You start at I hate my life. Then you do self-improvement and you become good and you feel very well. Then you're right here. Then you feel good. And then two things can happen. You can first of all, relapse relapse and go like this or you can become obsessive with self-improvement and go deep into the rabbit hole and really become this blueprint self-improvement guy who's doing the habits and not living his life this is the point where you start to kind of stop having fun and where you forget how to have fun and you're just like i have to get this done in 20 minutes i have to get on the bus i have to get do this 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 and you're so stressed that you feel like the odds of you succeeding in life become lower and lower and then from here on you can go back to this point and you will go back to this point simply by frustration about not having time because you're spending all your time being busy and we'll cover that later. So this part here is going to be the first part of our guide here. The second, the, the second part of the guide is the guy who got complacent. The guy who got complacent fell down. He felt very good. He rested on his success and he fell down to here. Now he needs to do much more work because this thing here is what he needs to, needs to get over mentally. And this is what he does here. He thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and then it clicks in his mind. And then he sees, okay, I shouldn't stop this self-improvement thing. It was really good for me. I loved my life right here. And then he gets disciplined again. And then he has to go through the same thing. He maybe starts with, with obsessive self-improvement. He thinks, I have, to make, I have to make up for all this time right here. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna go really obsessive with habits. Then he sees, oh shit, it doesn't work. He sees this right here, and then he gets onto regular self improvement again. This is how the cycle of people is on self improvement. Now I think that I have unlocked the way out of this, the way in which you don't go down here because you get complacent or obsessive, but if you just go up here and keep making progress. Now, how do you do this, you might think? You might think this guy's just talking trash. He's in the forest, he's just, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And my friend, I don't know everything, but I know what I'm talking about when it comes to getting out of a rut. I could start talking about many, many situations in which the odds were against me, in which I felt like I didn't deserve um, anything out. And this is really when you know that you're down there. You know that you're on rock bottom when you don't even have hope to get out of it again. You think I'm gonna be for this for the rest of my life. Does my life even make sense is then the next thought and the next thought is then do I end my life. So I was essentially two thoughts away from being suicidal a lot of times and sometimes even suicidal. I was a lot of times sitting there and just praying to God, please just take my life. I don't want it anymore. And I'm going to not lie to you. It was because of the cycle that I just explained to you. And I want you to get out of it. I don't want you to experience the things, the bad things I experienced in my life. I just want you to feel good and I want you to make progress on your self-improvement journey. I want you to be mentally healthy and stay like that. So first of all, we'll cover the obsessive self-improvement guy, the guy who obsesses about habits and about protocols and all these things. The artist, the self-improvement artist that I was for a long amount of time. I've been both of these characters and I see it more or less in every self-improvement guy. Everyone has been those two characters and rarely have people managed to get out of it. And I'm today gonna to teach you how to do that. So obsessive people, watch now and listen. Put this video into full screen. And for the people who got complacent, just jump on the second part of self-improvers of this video. I'll have it in timestamps below. Ask yourself why you're doing something. Ask yourself behind the purpose of why you're doing something. And then the obsessive guy will be out of there. Does measuring your meditation time have anything to do with how focused you are? No. Does it make any difference in your real life outcome if you have 3% more testosterone? No. Does it make a difference if you eat white rice instead of brown rice? No. Ask yourself these questions. Do I achieve different if I do different? If yes, do different. But if not, don't. Does it make a difference in my sleep if I measure my sleep or not? If it does, do it or don't do it if it changes it for the worse. Just think for yourself. Just ask yourself behind every habit you do, everything you do, does it change anything about my habit if I change it like this or like this? And if it does change something that you think it's worth changing it, do it. But don't be the guy who spams Andrew Huberman Lab podcast and gets all the ideas and gets on, on, on protocols and, and light therapy and fucking gets better help as an app on his phone. You don't need all this. Stop it. This is what I preach on this channel. I don't only preach how to get into self-improvement. I preach exactly what you need. Just ask yourself this one simple question. Get your life purposeful. Make your habits worth something again. Think what did the version of me do that was happy with self-improvement and don't think right now, oh, but he didn't have this business going on. He didn't have this relationship. He didn't have that girl. Mm. Or he had that girl, he had that business, right? It doesn't change anything. Self-improvement isn't working on your outside world. It's working on yourself. That's why it's called self-improvement and not outside world self-improvement. Now you can think about this and think, hold up, what is this guy teaching me right now? And what I'm teaching you right now is don't be the measurement guy. Stop the numbers because numbers aren't worth anything. So that's what I advise to the blueprint self-improvement artist. Have some fun. 
because even if you believe, even if you believe in God, I used to think this, if I go to a party, I sin. If I look at a girl, I sin. If I eat a piece of cake, I sin. But imagine something. If you ask someone, a regular human, can I have a piece of bread, I'm hungry? Or can I have a little bit of food or a little bit of money from you? Is he gonna say no? Is he gonna give you a snake instead of a bread? No. He's not gonna beat you in the face if you ask for a little bit of a pause. So if humans who are sinners, who are evil, who do all these wicked things, if they understand to give you good, if they say, yes, of course, of course you can have my money. Here, here are five bucks or something. Here's a little bit of food. Here's a little bit of drink. I, I can give you some water. If humans are evil and understand to give you good, how much more good can your father in heaven give you? I was playing with my rabbit just the other day and I was thinking to myself, I am to this rabbit like God is to me. It's probably not true entirely, but it's true partially, right? I could pick it up, kill it and eat it if I wanted to. I could lift it up and put it in the tastiest grass. I could help it or I could destroy it. I was the master of him. And I, and, and, and I just, and it just struck my head. I am with this rabbit like God is with me. And I was excited every single time the rabbit tried something new out. It tried climbing things. It tried getting to other rabbits. It tried getting into tastier grounds and everything. And when it went into a bad territory where I know, okay, it's not good for him to be there. I don't want him to be there. I simply put my foot in front of his eyes and he turned back. And if I, who is a sinner, understand to guide an animal in a good way, how much more can God guide me in my life? God wants you to have fun. God doesn't want you to be an incel. God wants you to interact. God wants you to see pleasure in his, in his um, buildings. Of course, you, of course you shouldn't sin, duh. But you don't sin if you try something new out. You don't sin if you just go to a party. You don't sin if you waste a little bit of time. You don't sin if you play a video game or something. And of course, I'm not telling you this is good or something. Of course, if you're disciplined enough, blah, 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 blah. But I'm not talking to a guy who's been complacent here. I'm talking to the workaholic self-improvement guy, okay? You need to have fun in your life. You need to experience life because you are preparing for life. You're perfectly prepared. You did self-improvement, so, so you were prepared for a life. And now you refuse to live life because you're too scared. Don't cope right now. Don't say, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a disciplined alpha male. I'm not scared of life. You are. If you're not living it, you clearly don't see any value in it or you see value in it or you just say, oh, it's just not worth it and you cope. Just go out and party. If it's such a waste of time, just go and try it once. I challenge you to a 14 day program. You like those probably. Go to two parties in the next 14 days and see how it changes your life. Be more spontaneous. If someone asks you, hey, do you have time today? Really think to yourself, could I realistically improve in that time? Yes or no? Sure, there's always something to do. You can always write a new post on your self-improvement page. You can always do something, but is it really that big? Is it, does it really make a difference? to you in your life? Does it make a difference to write a post on your self-improvement forum? Probably not. Does it really make a difference to make that one phone call? Probably not. Does it really make a difference to meditate for 10 minutes more today? Probably not. So just enjoy your life. Learn to enjoy it more, right? Because God wants you to enjoy your life. He gave you this life to enjoy it. He didn't give it to you to sin, but he gave it to you to explore and enjoy because he could have taken you to the kingdom of heaven instantly. He could have done that. But he wanted to, to experience his creation because he is happy with it. He's grateful that he did it. And he wants you to be grateful for it too. And you can't be grateful for it if you don't even experience it. So go out, experience life. Now I'll talk to the guy who's fallen off track to the complacent man. The complacent man needs to have fucking discipline and you need to man up because oh boy, there are hard times in front of you. 
And the advice that I give to that guy who's gotten complacent is the following. You sit down and meditate for one hour every single day. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You need to start doing the hard stuff. You need to do the same things as the as the autistic blueprint self-improvement guy has to do, but you need to stop doing the other side. I told the autistic blueprint self-improvement guy, however you want to call him, I taught him see life as something that is fun, but also ask yourself why you're doing things and if it really makes a difference to do something or not. But what, but what I'm telling you is go hard on the basics. Go hard on what yourself who was happy went hard on. I would recommend you just go as hard as possible, have as much discipline as possible and forget how to have fun for two months instead of for six. Have a nice day and master your mind.